So we are at the halfway point of 2021, and looking at the second half of the year, Nintendo is absolutely insane with the amount of exclusives coming to the Nintendo Switch. While the PlayStation 5 has Horizon Forbidden West, maybe, and the Xbox Series X has Halo Infinite, maybe, Nintendo has managed to bolster the Switch games lineup with tons of exclusives, and we might even learn about more coming out before the year's end. So today I want to look at some of these exclusive titles and highlight them, and in the process make you weep because your wallet is going to be destroyed trying to buy everything we talk about today. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome! Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and be sure to like and share the video, but without any further ado, let's take a look at the second half of the 2021 for the Nintendo Switch, and all these exclusives that are coming. Now since we are in the month of July, I'm going to skip The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD because, I mean, it's probably out by the time you watch this video, so we're going to start things out with August, and in August, on August 27th, we have No More Heroes 3 hitting the Nintendo Switch. Yes, Travis Touchdown is back, and you know, I'm kind of looking forward to this game. Travis Strikes Again was definitely a game that left a bad taste in my mouth. I didn't really enjoy it, and it was very buggy, but a proper No More Heroes game is definitely something that's on my radar, as I love the first two games on the Nintendo Wii. You have to fight through the galactic superhero ranking system as the evil prince FU has taken over Earth. You know, it's common stuff when it comes to the No More Heroes games. You're basically trying to become the best killer and number one in the rankings. You, of course, have your beam katana. You have a death glove. You have tons of cool wrestling moves. And there's even like a mech suit you can unlock at certain points in the game as well. Of course, in order to get your rank up so that you can contend to get higher in the superhero rankings, and of course, in order to access the Galactic Superhero Rankings, you have to do weird mini games to level up Travis so that he's able to even participate in the Galactic Ranking System for the superheroes. And you know, it's just one of those weird sort of games. The writing and the setting of the game should be absolutely crazy. It's a Suda51 game. If you've played the other No More Heroes games, you definitely know what to expect. And honestly, I think the graphics look pretty decent. This game has looked a bit spotty at times. It's not going to be a big AAA experience in terms of the graphical fidelity, but there's enough charm in the No More Heroes franchise that definitely makes No More Heroes 3 a game that I'm really looking forward to. I'm definitely interested in seeing the progression of the Travis Touchdown character and just to see what sort of weird settings you get in, put into within this game. Like I said, No More Heroes 3 comes out on August 27th and it's a great way to start off the list. Moving into the month of September, we actually have three exclusive games coming to the Nintendo Switch, including a game that you've probably never heard of, but kicking things off on September 10th, we have WarioWare Get It Together, and honestly, I'm not really looking forward to this game. I know there are a ton of people that love the WarioWare games to death, and I used to be one of those people. I just kind of wish that Wario would be back in a proper Wario Land game, because those were the games that I really enjoyed. I feel like these small little mini games just sort of, you know, lose their luster after a while, but there are over 200 mini games to compete in in WarioWare Get It Together, where of course timing is pretty much everything. It's all really based on timing, where you have to do certain weird objects that Nintendo finds funny when they program them into these games. Now there's going to be local co-op in this game as well, which should be really cool, and it says that there's going to be online play on the Nintendo Switch website, but I don't really know anything about the online play because they haven't talked about it as far as I can tell. It's your typical WarioWare style of game where you're doing a bunch of weird mini games and trying to do them as fast as possible in order to move on to the next thing. So I'm sure there will be a lot of people that like it. Of course, this is just a $50 game, so at least it's not a full price game, but it's definitely a game that I'll keep an eye on, but hope for a sale on it because I don't know, the WarioWare games, they're just not really for me. But if you like the WarioWare games, WarioWare Get It Together comes out on September 10th and you're probably very excited. Now, before we get into the next game on this list, I want to give a huge thank you to Fixture and the Fixture S1 for sponsoring this video. What is the Fixture S1? Let's talk about it. As someone who plays the Nintendo Switch a lot in handheld mode, I am extremely happy that about six months ago, Fixture reached out to me about the Fixture S1 because this is my primary way of playing my Nintendo Switch now when in handheld mode. Being able to use my Pro Controller is fantastic, and the Fixture S1 is super easy and very adjustable when it comes to playing your Nintendo Switch. Fixture has now introduced an easy way to store and carry your Fixture S1 with a new case for your system that includes game card slots to hold your physical games and some additional storage as well. 
In the description box down below, I have a link to the bundle on Amazon that comes with the case and the S1. But if you just need the case or just want to try out the S1 on its own, check out the other link to Fixture's website and save on their website by using the coupon code 5OFF at checkout. Trust me, the Fixture S1 is absolutely legit and I use it all the time when playing my Nintendo Switch in handheld mode. A big thank you to Fixture for sponsoring this video and thank you for the cool custom RGT85 S1 as well. The next game on our list comes out on September 14th. It's a game that I had never heard of before before looking up this list, but it's something I think is actually pretty cool and it's called Colors Live or Colors Live. I'm not sure which way you say it, but hey, this comes out on September 14th. And yes, it is an art game. You draw, you paint, you do sort of other things on the Nintendo Switch in handheld mode. There's different missions to do. There's a deep online community as well that they're trying to bolster with this game where you can do things like share your artwork and talk about other people's artwork, leave comments on it rank it and whatnot but what i think is really cool about this is that the collector's edition or like the deluxe edition of this game actually includes like a touch sensitive pen that you plug into your nintendo switch when in handheld mode and then use it while playing this game so i think that's really neat and really unique something like mario paint is something that i want to see come to the nintendo switch and maybe if this game does well enough it'll ha sort of give a indication to nintendo to say hey this game and genre is something that people are interested in on the switch system colors live or colors live comes out on september 14th also on september 14th the return of a classic franchise cruise on yeah yeah the usa except it's cruise and blast so Cruise and Blast is obviously an over-the-top arcade racing game within the Cruise and series that used to be around forever. Cruise and USA, of course, came out on the Nintendo 64. There are roughly 30 tracks, 23 different vehicles to check out, and it's just an over-the-top racing game. And there's going to be local multiplayer in the game. I don't know if there's going to be online multiplayer in it yet, but I do hope there is. And there is a dinosaur track. And you pretty much put a dinosaur in a video game and it looks cool. And like, I'm interested. I just become like a complete child with like wilderment and amusement when i see a dinosaur so cruise and blast i'm really looking forward to this game it is a nintendo switch exclusive and it is coming out on september 14th can you count a new system as an exclusive because i mean technically it's an exclusive thing to the nintendo switch family of systems and on october 8th we of course have the nintendo switch oled model coming out pretty much for handheld players only it features a seven inch oled screen they pretty much got rid of the bezel on the standard nintendo switch model it features a better kickstand that you could do at a bunch of different angles improved audio because nintendo hasn't given any actual specifics as to what sort of speakers the system is going to use it will have the same battery that was featured in the first Nintendo Switch revision, giving you about 4.5 to 9 hours of battery life. And of course, it has a new dock on it as well that comes with a Ethernet adapter, and you get 64 gigabytes of internal storage instead of 32 gigabytes. Now, is this the Nintendo Switch Pro? That's a debate for a different video. All I know is this is a new Nintendo Switch model that's coming out on October 8th, and I think there's something else coming out on October 8th. Some, some sort of game. A lot of people seem to be excited for it. Some people seem to think that it's going to sell over 3 million copies in the first year and that is a game called metroid dread now i absolutely love the metroid franchise contrary to popular belief and the return of 2d metroid is absolutely fantastic to me now this game storyline wise will be taking place after the events of metroid fusion so if you want to play that i guess use an emulator or bust out your wii u because hey it's not available on the nintendo switch planet zdr gets overtaken by aliens and other creatures so samus has to go in now what's cool about this is the whole emmy machine I don't know if you pronounce it E-M-M-I, but I'm just going to call it Emmy because it's easier to say. And these machines will basically track down Samus with various different abilities in various areas within the game. And it's sort of like Alien in the Aliens film because you have this creature that's chasing you and maybe the equipment you have right then and there won't be enough to take it out. So you have to be stealthy. You have to avoid contact or you just have to run the hell away. I honestly think this game looks absolutely great. You know, the graphical style of the game is kind of hit or miss for some people because of the 2D graphics but I think the finished product is going to be very impressive. We really haven't seen many areas from this game as well. Nintendo's been pretty secretive of that, so I think that really leads me to believe that some of these other areas are going to be very much more colorful and things of that nature, and it seems like Samus has a great variety of abilities to use, including new abilities, and yes, Metroid Dread comes out on October 8th. Will it sell over 3 million copies in the first year? Probably not, but I bought two. I bought the limited collector's edition, and I'll be buying the digital edition to play, so hey, you got off to a head start Nintendo. 
Also in October, we have Mario Party Superstars coming out on October 29th. And this is the Mario Party, honestly, we should have gotten instead of Super Mario Party. Because Super Mario Party was a huge disappointment to me because I am an adult. My friends do not live down the street from me. I need to play with my friends online. And there was like really crappy online with that game when it first came out. But Mario Party Superstars is like the complete opposite. You get five boards and over 100 mini games from the N64 Mario Party games, which let's be realistic. Those were some of the best Mario Party games, those and of course the GameCube entries as far as game variety is concerned, mini games are concerned, and just fun is concerned. You, you sort of burn that little thing with the analog stick on the N64 on the inside of your palm because you tried to win and maybe you did win so it made it all worthwhile. And the most important thing with Mario Party Superstars is that everything in the game can be played online. Every board, every mini game, and like that's a huge win! That's what we should have gotten with the original Super Mario Party. But hey, better late than never when Mario Party Superstars comes out on October 29th. Moving into November, we have Shimigami Tensei 5 coming out on November 12th. You play as a teenager in modern Tokyo who gets like into a different dimension of Tokyo that is overrun by demons. I mean, that's kind of awkward. Now, I don't really know a whole hell of a lot about this franchise. I only played one game on the PS2 pretty briefly, and I played the game on the Nintendo DS, but this trailer definitely makes me interested in this game. I think the graphical style of the game, while off-putting to some people, I think it looks really good. I really like the different sorts of colors that they're using within this game, and just the sort of cel-shaded graphics graphical style because I think it works more so to the Nintendo Switch's strengths when it comes to graphics and whatnot. It's a turn-based RPG and you can get extra attacks if you use a specific attack against an enemy that is weak against that specific attack. Of course, you're also collecting demons in the game as well, so it's kind of like a Pokemon for adults because, I mean, the Shemagami Tensei games, I at least know, are a bit dark in sort of tone and in game nature. But I think this game is going to surprise a lot of people. I don't know, it was a game that I wasn't super interested in, but this latest trailer actually kind of changed my mind about it a bit. Shemagami Tensei 5 comes out on November 12th, and if you're an RPG fan, there's another game to add to your collection. On November 19th, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl will be coming to the Nintendo Switch. And yes, these were originally games that released back in 2006 on the Nintendo DS, and these are remakes of them. Now, there's a lot of nostalgia for people with these games when they came out back in 2006 on the Nintendo DS. Me, however, I was in my early 20s. I really wasn't playing Pokemon stuff like that. So these games I have never played before. And looking at what they've done with the remakes of these games, I'm not really super interested in it. I think the graphic style of the game is clean enough but it definitely just looks like something that was kind of bare bones and Pokemon fans are obviously going to be excited to revisit these games again and I totally understand that and the younger generation of Pokemon fans will probably eat this up as well but Arceus is the game that I want to see Arceus is the game that I'm interested in but unfortunately that does not come out until January but if you're a big Pokemon fan you already know this game is coming out you probably already pre-ordered the dual pack for this game so you're well aware it's coming out I don't need to talk about it too much in try to sell you on it when Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl come out on November 19th. And I'll probably contradict everything I just said sort of negatively about the Pokemon games with this next game, but I don't care. I do that all the time. And that is Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp coming out on December 3rd. Hell yes. Hell yes, hell yes, hell yes. They are remakes of the Game Boy Advance games, the first two Game Boy Advance games that came out on the Game Boy Advance, but you probably didn't play them because Advance Wars was definitely more of a niche series. It's basically a tactical strategy game where you're moving troops, trying to take out other troops, having to use the environments to your advantage or even disadvantage at times and I just absolutely love these games I don't know what it is about them but they were so satisfying on the Game Boy Advance and to see them coming to the Nintendo Switch makes me shriek with joy now yes you do get two campaign modes with this as this is Advance Wars 1 and 2 coming to the Nintendo Switch but there's actually more stuff included yes you get to play this game online and do skirmishes online with different people up to four people online like that's gonna be so much fun you might could even get a job in the military if you do a really good job with commanding your troops and taking out your friends or enemies even when you're playing this game this game looks absolutely great i like the visual style i know it's a bit polarizing for some people but i think it looks really nice and simple and clean and that's what an advanced wars game needs advanced wars 1 and 2 reboot camp comes out on december 3rd and yeah i'm pretty excited for it 
So like I said at the start of this video, these are just the Nintendo Switch exclusive games that we know about. There could be more announcements before the year's end, and some of these games might actually come out. We've seen lots of companies announce games and then a few months later release them. But I think even if these are all the games that we get, it is a very solid list, especially when you compare it to the exclusives coming out on other platforms. So let me know in the comments section down below which exclusives you're looking forward to playing on your Nintendo Switch. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video a huge thank you to fixture and the fixture s1 for sponsoring this video seriously guys it's a kick-ass product i use it all the time check out the links in the description box down below and even save some coin and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later